If you don't know me, my name is Paige Weber Kelly. I graduated from Boise State University in 2008 with a BFA in graphic design. Uh, I also have a minor in painting. Uh, art has always been a, a big part of my life. My mother was an artist and growing up I loved drawing and it just never left. So I decided to do this crazy project called 365 Days of Art where I created art for every day of the year. To give you a summary of what this video is about, I'm going to be talking about my 365 Days of Art project for 2015. I'm going to tell you what inspired it, how it really went, what opportunities came about because of it, what I feel I accomplished, and what's going to happen next. So stay tuned. What is 365 Days of Art? Well, it's a project where I created art for 365 days of the year starting January 1st, 2015. I had a daily email list that had first purchasing rights of the painting of the day. And the pricing structure that was set up for the paintings was the per day of the year. So if it was January 1st, that painting was $1. January 15th, that painting was $15. January 30th, that painting was $30. Each month had its own theme, so I had 12 themes. This was to help keep me motivated, give me subject matter that I wouldn't normally choose, and just give me a break once in a while. Maybe I wanted to switch up mediums or uh, wanted to focus on animals versus people versus still lives. So it helped keep momentum going. How did this idea come about? Well, I started reading this book called Creativity for Sale by Jason Surferath, and he wore a t-shirt a day for a year and did videos, and they were different companies' t-shirts, and he used the pricing structure that I described before. And it was kind of an interesting idea. So I, I really thought it was very creative. And then I uh, heard a podcast with Jolie Guillebeau, and she was doing 100 paintings in 100 days and selling them on her blog and Facebook page, I believe. And so I just thought the brainchild of 365 days of art was born. And I thought, why not? I can do that. I want to see if I can do that. Why would you do a project like this? Well, I love, love, love big goals, and it was definitely a lofty goal. Uh, it would also give me lots of practice in drawing and painting, uh, and maybe, just maybe, I can make a little money doing it as well. So let's talk about themes, because every month had its own theme, and uh, I picked them, and it kind of went along with how I was feeling, maybe with what I was interested in at the time. Uh, January was Sweet Indulgence Month, and it was a month filled with sweets, which is not the best thing to pick in January, because, you know, you're supposed to be getting healthy. But I did pound the pavement in Boise, because I was living in Boise at the time, and I went to local businesses like Guru Donut and La Chocolate Bar and Jean Jou Patisserie in the Cupcake Store, and I bought sweets and I did eat them. I bought them, did still lifes with them, and did paintings of them. So that was my first foray into food painting, but it was a lot of fun, lots of color, and it, it was really a great kickoff to this project. My next month, February, was Quench, and it was filled with breweries and coffee shops, uh, teas, coffee, and of course, beer. Uh, I love craft beer, so it was great to go visit Crooked Fence and some of those local breweries in Boise, and actually some in Great Falls because my then fiance was living in Great Falls, Montana. And so that was the theme for February. March. I embarked on what I call cult of portraiture. Uh, I love to draw people. It's one of my favorite things. And I like old movies and pop culture. So I just thought, why not combine the two? So I got to watch a lot of fun old movies. Uh, lots of nostalgia was in the air. And it was strictly portraits. 
April was the month of Magnified, where I took objects and I blew them up. Uh, I had a class in college, a painting class, where we did that for one of the assignments and I just really loved the look of it. And so I thought, you know what? That would make a great challenge for this painting project, so let's do that. And it actually was pretty successful. People really did enjoy that one. May was the month of tropical. I got married in late April in Kauai, and so I had lots of subject matter when I got back and did a lot of paintings of beach scenes and plants, and really there's nothing better than something tropical to paint, right? Just reminds you of your vacations, so. June's theme was Great Falls, because in June I moved to Great Falls, Montana from Boise, Idaho. So I explored what I thought Great Falls had to offer, and they had a lot of interesting things to see. And I, I found that I did a lot of, I think that was the beginning of the birds that I was doing in Great Falls, so. July ushered in my favorite month, I think. Uh, it was Whimsy, Wonder, and Whiskers, and it really was an illustration month. I got to do all sorts of fun animals and just let my imagination run wild, and maybe that's why it is one of my favorite months, but it was very fun, and as you can see, there were lots of characters that I developed during that time. August was the month of moleskin. So for me, as an artist, a sketchbook is really important. And I wanted to lighten the mood a little bit in this month and get into that sketchbook. So it really offered the viewer a chance to look and see what my sketchbooks actually looked like during that time. So it was kind of a, it was sort of like a break, but not really in this drawing project. In September, I played with my graphic design roots. I explored lettering during this time, and I can tell you lettering is really hard. At least it was really hard for me, and I have a greater appreciation for lettering artists and sign painters. Man, it really takes some work. Uh, during this time, I actually attended a calligraphy conference in Bozeman, Montana, and really learned a lot, had a great time and really have a lot of appreciation for folks who do that for a living. So October was Heads and Tails month, and this ranks right up there with Whimsy, Wonder, and Whiskers. This month was originally supposed to be just portraits and maybe some animals, but it wound up to be almost all animals. Only one portrait came out of that. And I realized that I have a real knack with drawing animals. So it was fun and I learned something new and really was pushing myself to do something I hadn't really done much of. And so it's right up there at the top. At the end of October, I moved from Great Falls, Montana to Pocatello, Idaho. And during this time, you know, you have Thanksgiving, uh, I decided November was gonna be everyday gratitude. In moving, I found some sketchbooks and was flipping through them and noticed that I really enjoyed some of the simple drawings that I had put in there of just everyday objects. And I thought, this is perfect for November. I'm gonna make it everyday gratitude and focus on one object and tell why I'm thankful for that object. December became the month of the rest of the story. Basically, it was kind of a catch-all for everything. I had gotten behind, so anything that was behind got put in this month because I moved twice. I had about 19 days that I eventually had to make up within the year and in some in 2016. So I just kind of went for it and did whatever I felt like doing at the time uh, just to keep the momentum and to finish out the project. Um, so it had a lot of Star Wars and some portraits in there, uh, animal drawings. Uh, it was sort of a catch-all. There were actually two phases to this project. 
in, from January to June, I was living in Boise, Idaho. I was single and I was working full time. I'd yet to get married. Uh, so at this time, I would get up at 4 a.m., start painting, paint until about 6.30 a.m. when I'd start getting ready for work. And then when I'd come home for my work day, I would paint in the evenings till about 11 p.m. And that was a daily occurrence. And then on the weekends, I would try to paint ahead a little to give myself a little bit of a buffer and uh, to be able to schedule emails and social media things, which always seem to take more time than you ever really expect them to. Uh, the second phase of this project was when I moved to Great Falls, Montana. So that was a whole undertaking in itself because I had to pack, move, and unpack. So there were a few days there, there were about 10 days there that I just was not able to paint and had to do some makeup days, which kind of counted towards the makeup days that I made in 2016. Uh, during the second phase, I was no longer working full time. I had the luxury of being able to paint and draw during the day. Uh, I also had some other responsibilities and now I was married. So uh, that second half of my project uh, was just a little bit different and I hopefully wasn't getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning to paint, but had a little bit more leeway. Uh, then in October, well late October, early November, we moved again back to Pocatello, Idaho. So I had another set of uh, circumstances where I was moving, unpacking. So I had another s period of time where I did not paint uh, and had to make up those makeup days just to get settled and moved. So I completed the project out of Pocatello, Idaho. So I've had people ask me, how, how do you stay motivated? Well, it helped that I had the themes because they really did help me change it up. I also changed mediums, so I used at least, really I think I used over five mediums and so it was kind of a learning process, right? It's like taking a, a grad course where you're you're really hitting it hard and trying to learn about mediums and illustration and everything. So it really was like taking a class. Um, I There was an article that came out about the project and that helped keep me motivated because I didn't want to let anyone down. I wanted to succeed and get those 365 days in. There really was only one time that I seriously considered quitting this project. It was in September. I was away at a calligraphy conference or a workshop, and I remember sitting on the edge of the bed in my hotel room just questioning, why? Should I quit this? Do people care? I don't know if I wanna continue with this. But honestly, quitting was not an option for me. So I had my moment, my little pity moment, and then I got back on track, and you know, I was so close to finishing anyway, I just motored on. If you followed this project at all, you would have noticed several changes to the plan. First of all, uh, the first change to the plan would have been the pricing structure. What I quickly learned when I moved to Great Falls was I couldn't create larger pieces of work. What I was doing was already taking three, four, five hours to create in the sizes of six by nine or nine by 12. I just couldn't get bigger. And therefore, I couldn't justify charging higher prices for smaller work. I also wasn't matting or framing any of the work that I was doing because I couldn't afford to do that for every piece. And, you know, it's just time consuming all the way around. So I changed the pricing structure to uh, $99 per piece. And then eventually, as I started moving into the mall skin month, I uh, eliminated the pricing structure altogether because uh, it really took a lot of pressure off of me. I didn't have to create sellable work. So that was the first change. The second change was the daily email list. Um, I can't quite remember when I quit sending a daily email. I kind of want to say I think it was August, September. And I started sending a weekly email and then it became a periodic email because, you know, we all get a bunch of mail. And even though I would get emails telling me, oh, we love getting the daily email, I just kind of wanted to give my followers a little bit of a break from that. Uh, 
and you know I wanted them to look at the email so if you got one once a week maybe you'd really look through it whereas daily you might just delete it and move on a lot of opportunities come my way because of this personal project my very first opportunity was I was able to show my donut paintings at Guru Donuts grand opening that was really cool and I got some donuts too cool right so that was neat and then in uh, let's see that was in February in March I partnered with Idaho brew mag and gave one of their readers a print so that gave me some exposure and a, a partnership with Idaho brew mag in April uh, Catherine Jones of the Idaho Statesman did an article about my project and that really got me a lot of new interest and subscribers to my email list and I, I could never have expected to have something like that happen but thank you very much Catherine because it was an awesome opportunity and then just last month January of 2016 I was approached by raw artists to participate in their signature show coming up in March on March 24th in Boise so I'm gonna be showing a lot of the paintings that I created for my 365 days of art at their show so I'll, I'll tell you more about that and give you a link to where you can get tickets and get more information later uh, also this month I guess February 1st I also because of this project had an opportunity to talk to the American Falls Art Guild and that was a great opportunity for me to meet other artists and uh, just talk about some of my work and the different mediums that I use. Uh, it was very enjoyable and I really am thankful for that opportunity as well. well. You might ask, were there any surprises? There were actually. One thing that really surprised me and warmed my heart was the response that I got from my followers. The folks that were on my email list as well as people who were following me on Facebook and my blog. Often I would get emails randomly from people on my list and it would just make my day. Uh, I loved hearing from you and I always got positive feedback and you made this project rock. So I just wanna say thank you for following along and sending encouraging words of wisdom and just saying hey. Um, another surprise was that I didn't ever really realize that I had a knack for drawing animals. So I learned that because otherwise I would have never drawn any animals for any reason. That was a surprise. Um, I also had a great opportunity to work with a variety of mediums. Mediums that maybe I haven't even worked with for almost 20 years, dare I say. And uh, I just had freedom and fun and I just went for it. And so I love that. Um, I got to a point where I really was just not afraid to fail and I just had a lot of fun and, and sometimes you just have to do that in art right you just gotta do it fail or maybe not fail and go for it lastly I rediscovered my joy of drawing uh, my mom always tried to encourage me to to work with color and in the last few years I really have strictly done that worked with painting or pastels or something of that nature and so going back to drawing was really a kick and uh, I really loved working with values a little bit more intensely and um, it was just nice to to do something different so those were some of the surprises of this project would you do it again well I would not change anything about 2015 at all I would do it again uh, moving forward would I do it again probably not I might do a doodle a day or a, you know, a painting a week, uh, but I think now that I've conquered this, I, I'm ready to move on to other things. So what's next? Well, I am going to continue to draw and paint. Uh, I'm, I'm taking it easy a little bit, so I'm kind of excited about that. If I go on vacation, I am going on vacation. And um, I will continue to paint and draw and try to do that daily if I can. If not, that's okay. I'm really looking forward to working on more creative projects, uh, maybe combining some things from this project, um, working larger. So I think though my world is wide open and uh, I will be sharing that in my social media worlds and uh, I'm excited to see what comes from that. 
Also, I will, like I said before, be having this Raw Artist Show, which I love to have you come and join me for. It's at the Revolution Concert House, March 24th at 7 p.m. You can buy tickets below, I'll leave a link below. And uh, come say hi. If you, if you use the link below, you save five bucks, you support art, and you know you can come see me and we can chat. Well, final thoughts? Thank you. Thank you for following me in this project. Thank you for encouraging me and buying my paintings and uh, just throwing opportunities my way. This was a great project. Um, and of course, this isn't the last you're gonna see of me, but you won't be hearing from me daily. Uh, and if you wanna follow me on social media or connect with me there, click the links below and I'll put them there. Again, thank you and we'll see you next time.